The shepherds went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the infant lying in the manger. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the Feast of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries today, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who were pleased to give us the shining example of the Holy Family, grant, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity. And so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After the wise men had left, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and escape to Egypt, and stay there until I tell you, because Herod intends to search for the child and do away with him. So Joseph got up and, taking the child and his mother with him, left that night for Egypt, where he stayed until Herod was dead. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken through the prophet, I called my son out of Egypt. After Herod's death, the angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother with you, and go back to the land of Israel, for those who wanted to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up, and taking the child and his mother with him, went back to the land of Israel. But when he learned that Archelaus had succeeded his father Herod as ruler of Judea, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. There he settled in a town called Nazareth. In this way, the words spoken through the prophets were, be, were to be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Some young Christians were attending an international summer camp 
and one of the projects set before them was to discuss and explore ideas for spreading the gospel. The discussion was wide and varied. It included the use of television and radio programs, newspaper articles, magazine notices and so on. Finally, when they ran out of ideas, an African girl stood up and gave her opinion. In my opinion, she said, when we think that a pagan village is ready for Christianity, we don't send books and missionaries, we send them a good Christian family. The family's example is a more powerful proclamation of the gospel than all the books in the world. So, soon after celebrating the birth of Jesus, isn't it only fitting that we should celebrate the Feast of the Holy Family? Jesus, like all mortals, needed the warmth, security and closeness of a family unit to grow and develop as a person. Now, from today's reading, Mary and Joseph had pressures imposed on them from the outset. For a start, they seem to be constantly on the move. I was reading recently that it's 93 miles from Nazareth to Bethlehem. Now, for a pregnant woman, that journey would have been very hazardous. And then, of course, the long trek to Egypt with a baby would have been very precarious indeed. Because of their experience, the Holy Family can identify with all those migrant families who are on the move. And as a result of war, famine and sheer economic necessity. Today's reading says that Mary, Joseph and Jesus settled down in a town called Nazareth. Families and especially children need a settled environment in order to grow and develop as persons. Instability in family life, which can lead to its breakup, is harmful to children in the long run. Broken homes fuel childhood worries. In today's nuclear family, the traditional ties between the immediate and the extended family have become very tenuous indeed. This is a fact of modern living, but it's not making family life any easier. Herod was hell-bent on decimating the Holy Family. Now he symbolizes for us all those dark forces in our society which militate against family cohesion and there are quite a number of them. Recently the Holy Father said, those who undermine the fundamental role of the family cause a deep wound to society which is often impossible to repair. Referring to lifestyles which militate against Christian marriage and the family, the Pope says the Church opposes legislation that permits same-sex couples or same-sex so-called marriage because in the eyes of God only a man and woman can get married. Also, proponents of the, what is known as the gender theory, very much in the news these days, do family life no favours when they peddle the false notion that male and female roles are interchangeable at will and not grounded on the God-given attributes specific to men and women. And again he says, the marriage or the family based on a marriage between a man and a woman is a natural and irreplaceable institution and is fundamental towards the common good of every society. Now you often hear the term dysfunctional family, but it's often used rather glibly. It seems to refer to them and not to us 
because to a certain extent there is dysfunctionality in every family. Families with faith, however, will be able to ride the storm when things get difficult. They will rely on the grace of God given through the sacrament of marriage. So, as the new year approaches, let us dedicate and consecrate our family home life to the Lord and through the intercession of Mary and Joseph, may family life be constantly renewed in the likeness of the Holy Family of Nazareth. Christ is the High Priest of his people. It is in him that we come together to make our prayer to the Father of us all. Let us pray for a renewal of faith within the families of the parish. May the Church be transformed with families who keep to their faith and live the Gospel. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for families on the move, especially migrant families. May they be able to settle down to a more stable family life. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for broken families. May 2021 see a greater commitment to family unity and cohesion. Lord, hear us. We pray for family members who are ill, especially those who had to cope with the ill effects of COVID-19 and those on our sick list. May the healing of the Lord be theirs. Lord, hear us. We pray for the happy repose of the soul of Marcel Matley, all our family dead and those on our anniversary list. May eternal life be theirs. Lord, hear us. We now pray for specific family needs. Let us pray to Mary, the Mother of God, and the Mother of the Church family. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. God our Father, listen to our prayers today and grant us the things we ask for through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, May we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you, Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph, you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For on the feast of this awe-filled mystery, Though invisible in his own divine nature, he has appeared visibly in ours, and begotten before all ages, he has begun to exist in time, so that raising up in himself all that was cast down, he might restore unity to all creation, and call straying humanity back to the heavenly kingdom. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and he gave it to the disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our God has appeared on the earth and lived among us.
Let us pray. Bring those you will refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world we may share their company forever, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.